Welcome to another sewing tutorial. I'm Celia Ann and I will be showing you how to sew the free Stellan T pattern by French Navy. When I was thinking about how to approach this tutorial, I realized that this would be the perfect beginner pattern for someone who hasn't sewn a knit garment before. So bearing that in mind, most beginners that haven't sewn t-shirts or knit garments don't own an overlocker or serger. So I've decided to do this t-shirt entirely on my sewing machine. If you know the how and the why, it's really easy to sew knits on your sewing machine. So let's get started. To determine your size, look at the size guide. Place your measurements under size if it falls under various sizes, that's okay. But the most important is to look at the finished garment measurements. You'll be able to compare your size with the finished garment size and then determine how much ease you want in the garment. A great deal of your success in sewing knit fabrics is using the right needles. You can either use ballpoint needles or stretch needles. The weight of your fabric will determine what size you're going to use. So a normal medium weight fabric, like the cotton that I'm going to be using, can either take a 75 or 80. If you want your hems to have a professional finished look, you can use a twin needle, also known as a double needle. We will be covering how to use this twin needle a bit later on in the tutorial. I'm using a stretch twin needle. The numbers at the bottom 4 slash 75 means the width between the needles and the size of the needle. The distance between the two needles are 4 millimeters and the needle size is 75. The fabric I'm using for my Stellan tea is a basic cotton knit. This particular one is 100% cotton knit, so it's fairly stable. If you are a beginner and this is your first t-shirt, I advise you to get a good stable cotton knit to work with because that would be the easiest. To put it in perspective, this cotton knit has about 10% stretch. If you have a look at the suggested cutting layout, you can easily get this t-shirt out of less than a meter of fabric. By simply folding both selvages towards the middle, you'll have two folded edges, one on either side. If however your fabric is narrower, you're going to need to allow for more fabric. My fabric is actually much wider than normal, so I'm going to be measuring just the piece that I need for the front. So I'm measuring from the selvage to the folded edge and this ensures that the fabric is not twisted and it's even on the grain line. This will prevent your t-shirt from twisting after you wash it. When you are cutting out, let your palm face away from the pattern piece. If you do cut with your palm facing towards the fabric, at some point you're going to have to start lifting up the pattern piece. You can use pins to pin down the pattern piece or weights. You can either use a rotary cutter and cutting mat or you can use a dressmaking scissors. It's a good habit to get into that every time you've cut a pattern piece out, you fold the piece up instead of dangling it around and letting it stretch out of proportion. I'm now folding over the other selvage edge just by the amount that I need. And because my fabric is wider, this actually left me a chunk in the middle to cut out my sleeves. If you are using normal sharp pins, be sure to pin within the seam allowance because sometimes the sharp pins could snag and create a little hole. So if that does happen, at least it's happening in the seam allowance and not on your garment. You can use ballpoint pins. They are not as readily available but it does eliminate the risk of perhaps making a hole in your garments. Normal straight sharp pins are perfectly fine though if you just take care. Don't forget to snip all your notches. If you wish to, you can release your presser foot pressure. This will lessen the pressure your presser foot <laughs> has on your fabric so it won't stretch your fabric out as you're sewing. I'm going to be using a nice new size 75 stretch needle. Most machines have a basic zigzag stitch. We are going to be using that to construct our garment. There are other options 
my machine has a triple stretch stitch which I like to use or some machines have a lightning stitch which is also a great stitch to use. Our basic zigzag stitch for our seams are going to be a length of 1.5 and a width of 1.5. You can make this smaller just bear in mind that the smaller your width of your stitch the less stretch it will have. I'm using a contrasting color thread so that you can clearly see what I'm doing. The zigzag stitch will have a very slight ladder as you can see but if that is in a matching thread to your garment you won't notice it especially in a garment with positive ease because the seams are not going to need to stretch open to show you why the zigzag is needed i'm doing a straight stitch seam as the fabric of the garment stretches the normal straight stitch doesn't have the ability to stretch with it and of course this will result in popped stitches before we get started, I'd like to mention that throughout this entire tutorial, I made this garment with a one centimeter seam allowance. This proves two things. Number one, always read the instructions, especially the section that says before getting started, because if you do, you'll read that this pattern has a six millimeter or quarter inch seam allowance. And the second thing it proves is that no matter how long you've been sewing, you keep on making mistakes. Thankfully, knit garments are forgiving and this still turned out great. So I'm just gonna roll with it and ask you to please forgive me for my mistake and be sure to use a six millimeter or quarter inch seam allowance throughout. We're gonna start with shoulder seams. I'm putting them right sides together and then pinning within the seam allowance because I'm using normal straight sharp pins. At this point, you can stabilize your seam if you have a more flimsy, stretchy fabric. You can either use iron-on stabilizer or you can use clear elastic. There's plenty of tutorials out there to show you how to do it. If you are using a more stable cotton knit though, there's no need to stabilize this seam. I normally use the very durable triple stretch stitch or it's also known as backstitch and I found that to be enough stabilization for even the flimsiest knit fabrics. Just remember if you do want to use a fusible stabilizer or any type of elastic like clear elastic, do it on the back side of your shoulder seam. You're not going to want that plastic next to your skin so if it's towards the back of the shoulder seam it's not going to be touching your skin. Now the nice thing about knit fabrics is that there's no need to finish the seam allowances. The majority of knit fabrics don't fray. However, if for some reason you do wish to finish your seam allowances, you can do the same as what you would do with woven fabric. Use a larger zigzag and just zigzag along the edge. Sew the short ends of your neckbands together. This seam will have no need whatsoever to stretch, so you can use a normal straight stitch. Press your shoulder seams towards the back. And press open your neckband seam. Then press your neckband lengthways in half with the right side facing outward. Now mark the center front and back necklines. Putting the centers together, mark the quarter points. Likewise, mark the quarter points on your neckband. The neckband seam is going to be placed at the center back neckline. Then match up all of those quarter points. Remember your neckband is going to have to stretch to meet the circumference of your neckline. So the neckband is going to be smaller than the neckline. Make sure to pin your shoulder seam allowance towards the back. Keep all three raw edges together so that you get a nice even neckband. 
The shoulder seams are going to be very bulky where all of those layers of fabric meet together. If you snip the seam allowance to the stitching, not through, it releases that so that it lies flat. Then you can also trim the seam allowance in that area on the garment, not on the neckband. This nicely reduces that little lump that you sometimes get on the shoulder seam. Press the seam allowance of the neckband towards the garment. If you wish to, you can now top stitch the neckline, stitching the seam allowance to the garment. You can either stitch just the front and then do the back neck reinforcement strip, or you can stitch all the way around and omit the back neck reinforcement strip. I'm going to do as the pattern suggests and show you how to make the back neck reinforcement strip. We're going to take that little strip and press in the short edges by one centimeter. Then we're going to match that with a raw edge of the neck band seam allowance. First pin the ends and then ease in the rest and pin. We're going to stitch this down so that the stitches fall within the groove of the neckline. So what I like to do is I like to stitch from the right side so that I can see exactly where I'm stitching and basically we'll be stitching in the ditch. So I'm transferring my pins so that I can see it on the right side. And I'm also making sure that the pins are in the right direction. So as I'm sewing at the sewing machine, I want to pull the pins towards me and not have to fight with it. If you're using normal sharp pins here, just work really delicately and slowly. Starting right at the shoulder seam, I'm gonna stitch in the ditch and then end at the other shoulder seam. For the whole of the construction of the back neck reinforcement strip, you can use a normal 2.5 straight stitch. This area of the garment is going to require no stretching. If I was sewing this in a perfectly matching thread color, this line of stitching would not be visible. As you can see, folding over the seam is going to be extremely bulky. We're going to want to leave the neckband itself intact because that is going to stabilize the area and it's going to help us to evenly fold over the neckband strip. So I'm trimming away the excess seam allowance of the reinforcement strip as well as trimming some of the seam allowance of the actual garment. Now that we've reduced the bulk, we can take that reinforcement strip and fold it over the neckband area. This is going to neatly tuck in those raw edges. You can use pins to pin this down or you can use any type of clip. It's easier to clip bulky seams. We're going to be stitching right on the folded edge. Once again, we're going to use a straight stitch and remember, this is going to be completely visible from the right side. So take it slow and do it neatly. Start right on the shoulder seam stitch line. Try and keep this line of stitching as even as possible. Stitch right on the edge while still keeping an even distance from the previous line of stitching. Add two centimeters away from the raw edge of the hem, stitch a line of basting stitches. This is your longest stitch length on your machine. Use a straight stitch. These stitches will be removed later on. Do this for your front and your back hems, as well as both your sleeve hems. Press your hems up using that basting stitch line as your guide. Make sure you can just see those stitches as you press it up. I like to press up the hem of my sleeve while the pattern piece is still flat. With right sides together, pin the sleeve to the armhole matching the single front notch and the notch that matches the shoulder seam. 
Once you've pinned the ends as well as the two notches, you can ease in the rest of the fabric and pin. Your seam will be quite bulky if you had to leave it like this. You can either grade your seam with scissors or what I like to do with a shoulder seam if I'm not using a serger is to use a pinking shears. Cutting the seam allowance off with a pinking shears means that this whole seam has got added flexibility to it and reduced bulk. So now when we iron the seam allowance towards the garment, it blends in nicely and has no bulk. If you have one, you can use a tailor's ham to manipulate this curved edge. I made my own tailor's ham years ago. It's very easy to do and you can just use materials that can withstand a lot of heat. I made mine with two layers of 100% cotton and then stuffed it with wool fleece. Not fleece fabric as in the fleece that comes straight off of a sheep. And of course it was washed. As you can see, you've achieved a beautifully smooth shoulder seam. Press up the front and back hems. You can use glass head pins to help you with this. You can use steam to help to get the excess curved fabric to mold into place. Pin the side seams taking care to match the underarm seam. Your sleeve and bottom hem comes out at an angle, so sew up to your basting stitch line, pivot and then sew up the side. You will find when you fold the bottom hem up that there will be six layers all on top of each other. So if you snip at the seam allowance to the stitching, not through the stitching, you can fold the one seam allowance on the hem edge the opposite direction. This will reduce the bulk by half. If you want to finish your hem with a twin needle and you leave it at a six layer seam, you're going to find that the twin needle will probably skip stitches over there, but if you reduce the bulk by half, it will just sail past. You're going to repeat the same process on the sleeve hems as well as the bottom hems. Make sure that your main garment seam allowance is always pointing towards the back. The majority of machines comes with an extra spool holder for an extra spool of thread. If your machine doesn't have this, you can use the little winder that you put your bobbin on. Just use a full bobbin of thread in your desired color. I'm going to be using different colors so that you can see exactly what I mean when I'm showing you the stitching. I'm going to thread both threads through this top hook. When it comes to the hook right on top of the needle, if you have two separated hooks, you can hook one on each side. But I don't, I've just got one long hook. So if I put both threads through that one, they're going to twist together. So I'm only taking the yellow one, putting it through the top hook and then threading the needle. When it comes to the red thread, I'm just going to omit threading it through that top hook and just thread the needle straight away. This prevents the threads from twisting together as I sew. As with any other top stitching, we want a nice long stitch length. So we'll have a stitch length between three and four and a straight stitch and the width will be on naught. 
The most important element to using your twin needle is to change your stitch tension. So I've put up my stitch tension right up to the very top. On your machine it might be lower, it might be higher. You just have to play around on a little swatch and get it perfect and I'll show you now what you're looking for. I'll be doing a little swatch now to demonstrate why it's so important. Now to play it safe we're not going to back stitch when we're doing the twin needle stitch. Sometimes what back stitching can do is it can mess around with the tension on the bottom. You can see on top the stitches are nice and even and it's laying nice and flat. There's no tunneling between the two lines of stitches. Then when we look at the back is the most important. You can see there's a full zigzag at the back. This gives the optimal amount of stretch. So when you're playing around with swatches and with your machine tension, just make sure that the end result is this full zigzag at the back. Let's change the tension back to number four, which is my regular stitch tension. For this sample, we'll stitch the twin needle hem with the exact same settings, but without changing our normal tension. As you can see on the front, it looks pretty good, but if you look at the back of the pink stitches, you can see there's a dramatic difference in the size of the zigzag. It's still gonna have some stretch, but it's not gonna be durable. So back to our garment and let's stitch our actual hem. Now because of the nature of the two needles side by side, you can't pivot with a twin stitch needle. Just take it slow and curve slowly up to the side seam and then curve slowly back down. Remember we didn't backstitch in the beginning and we're not backstitching at the end. We're going to meet up these stitches perfectly together and then we're going to knot the ends at the back. I'm using this little swatch so that you can clearly see how to pull the threads through to the back. Lightly pull on your bobbin thread and that will bring the front threads to the back. Taking a pin, you can pull those front threads through to the back. Now simply take the front threads and the bobbin thread and knot them together a couple of times. I made this visible for you to see, but if you wanted it not to be seen, you can simply just pull those threads through with a needle to the back of the seam allowance and knot it underneath the seam allowance so you can't see it. If you don't wish to use a twin needle, that's perfectly fine. You've got other options. You can use a wider top stitching zigzag of a width of 2.5, a length of 2.5 and select the zigzag stitch. You're just going to remove the extension table on your sewing machine so that you've got the smaller circumference to put your sleeve through and then you're going to simply zigzag your hem. The only thing to remember when you're zigzagging a hem is not to pull on the fabric. When you're rotating your sleeve you want to make sure that your needle is down when you're pulling that sleeve through from the bottom. If your needle is up or if you're just really quickly sewing and sort of just pulling your sleeve and rotating it as you're sewing it's likely that you'll get skipped stitches because you're pulling the zigzag so every time you readjust your sleeve make sure your needle is down readjust your sleeve and then carry on sewing remove the basting stitches of the sleeve hems as well What I love about this pattern is that the sleeves are long enough to cuff it up so if you fold it up double it gives this really cute cuff detail To secure this cuff so that it doesn't keep on coming unfolded, you can just stitch right in that seam line. Line up the seams nicely and you can just use a straight stitch for this. 